So uh, milk is uh, important in uh, children's nutrition early on, particularly in the first year of life. It provides uh, a host of different nutrients, but most importantly, uh, calcium and vitamin D, which are less obtainable elsewhere. This is available through breast milk or artificial uh, formula milk. Um, other sources are, in the diet are less able to provide this uh, pre-weaning. Um, from a developmental point of view, this is important for bone growth, and um, bone strength going forward into their uh, adult years. And we know that uh, it's important to uh, get that bone strength in early as it's difficult to catch up with this later on. Okay, so there's two real main types of, of milk allergy. There's one which um, tends to give you uh, immediate type symptoms, usually within minutes, and then sometimes up to as long as two hours later. And that's called an, an IgE mediated uh, allergy or an antibody mediated allergy. And um, the other type of allergy has more delayed symptoms. And these usually occur at least two hours, more likely four hours later, and sometimes as long as 72 hours after the ingestion. There is some overlap between the two types of allergy, which makes it difficult for uh, interpretation sometimes. For the immediate type allergy, the symptoms tend to be uh, redness of the skin, itching and urticaria, and sometimes something called angioedema, which is swelling typically around the eyes or the lips and sometimes ears or other parts of the body. The um, they can also present with um, an eczema flare if they already have dermatitis or, ex or atopic dermatitis, which is common in children with allergies. Um, and they can sometimes get vomiting and diarrhea um, immediately after the ingestion. With the more delayed type of allergy, then you can get uh, symptoms which are generally multi more, more of them. So they tend to have a lot of those symptoms at once. And they'll also have uh, sort of colicky type symptoms, gut, uh, upset, vomiting, reflux, um, so discomfort after feeding, uh, and sometimes some diarrhea. Occasionally, they will have an uh, be fairly asymptomatic, so no symptoms, but they'll have blood and mucus in the stool. Complicatingly, they can also have some of those skin reactions with a redness of the skin and also um, e eczema, um, quite moderate eczema. Um, so it's quite a, a complex array of symptoms which are more delayed and usually more chronic. The thing that everybody worries about is the immediate reactions that are severe, but these are quite uncommon um, and rare in infancy where you can have something called anaphylaxis where the respiratory system or the um, or, or this cardiovascular systems involved. So the most important thing for the diagnosis is taking a detailed um, history from the parents about how um, they those symptoms have developed and the timing of those symptoms and the sorts of symptoms which uh, the children are presenting with. As I have explained already, there's sometimes a little bit of overlap between those two uh, conditions, and sometimes it's difficult. So you can test for the antibody for the immediate type of allergy. If it's unclear or you wanted to rule this out, you could do a test, and this would involve either taking some blood or something called a skin prick test. For a skin prick test, it would involve putting a drop of milk on the skin and pricking through that uh, drop of milk into the top layer of the skin to make a small well. Then you wipe away the milk and leave that for about 10 minutes or so. And any positive reactions will come up like a bump or a nettle rash, uh, which can be measured and uh, would diagnose the, the, the diagnosis would be positive for an IgE or immediate type allergy. So we don't know what the long-term effects of, of milk allergy 
are in terms of um, those children who are avoiding milk long term. Nutritionally, there are substitutes available, which is why it's important that they are managed by a doctor and a dietitian in the early stages, particularly. What we don't know as well is for the delayed type allergy, whether children who don't adhere to that diet and continue to have symptoms, whether there are long term effects on them, like there can be for other diseases like celiac disease, for example, when you don't adhere to the diet. For the immediate type allergies, the problems I see more often are uh, later on with anxiety. Um, so children becoming very worried about what they can and can't eat. And sometimes they have a, uh, a poor, uh, an unpleasant memory of a reaction that they've had in the past. And sometimes when parents are very anxious, children do pick up on that anxiety and uh, express that themselves. So it's really important to get those uh, diagnoses in early so that those children are used to asking about foods that contain milk and whether they are safe to eat those foods and getting that into the routine of their daily uh, eating. So uh, I think it's really important that once, uh, firstly, that um, breastfeeding is often uh, something that uh, parents either stop doing or they become milk free when they have the diagnosis. And that's not always necessary. Um, and breastfeeding is really important for both bonding with your child as well as the nutritional um, advantages. So it would be, uh, I, would, I would always try and encourage parents to continue breastfeeding where they can. The other thing that would be important is introduction of foods early, which are also allergenic, and perhaps doing that in concurrence with their breastfeeding, as those would be things which would help the child's um, um, tolerance of other foods which potentially they could become allergic to. And we now think that's uh, important in the longer term to prevent allergy. We think that the skin is the source of the allergic reactions for other foods. So it would be important if they have uh, a, um, a, a milk allergy, for example, with uh, a, um, an eczema or an atopic dermatitis for that to be managed really well um, so that they are less able to sensitize themselves through the skin. And, and then finally, I think it's important for a dietitian to be involved early on for those with milk allergy to make sure that the appropriate uh, diet is introduced, as well as um, calcium supplements for mum if she's milk free breastfeeding and the child if required and their nutrition requirements are not being met um, to ensure that, that that occurs appropriately. Um, I think those are the main key points for parents to, to consider going forward.